Hi guys, Kathy here. I am going to attempt a recipe tonight. Yes, I know. Kathy recipe. This is completely stolen, cased. We don't like to say stolen. Um, cased from Sia Lodge. Her um, channel will be linked below. She does some fun. She does hauls. She's like, you know, she's a lot like me, at least as far as her videos, except she can cook too. So anyway, I saw this video on her channel and was like, I can make this. Patrick, I think this is only three ingredients, so you could make a three ingredient variation. So I... Do you have this recipe already? If not, I'd love to see what you do to it. If you don't know who Patrick is, he's Zincat on YouTube, and he does three ingredient recipes every week. I believe it's on Thursdays he posts three. I'm sorry if I told you the wrong date. I'll have it right below, but he does a three ingredient recipe every week. So we are going to do bacon wrapped onion appetizers, I guess. So let's see what I can do. And I... Seriously, I don't know how to do regular videos that well, so trying to do a how-to showing you how to cook something, bear with me. Okay, for this recipe, you need some onions. I wasn't sure this is the first time I'm making it, so I got a sweet onion and a yellow onion and some bacon. This was for version one and would be the core to any alterations you make. Okay, let's see if we can do this. First, I took my onions and peeled off the skin, and then you want to cut off the bottom and top. What you actually want are the biggest rings, so, and don't tell me if I'm using the wrong knife, I'm sure I am, but you want to cut these fairly thick. Um, I didn't, I can already tell this one isn't cut evenly, but I'd say we're going to try this as like half an inch. Um, oh, my eyes are already watering about a half inch thick, see that? I guess you could do it as thick as you would like. Let's see how many we can get. Oh, seriously, eyeballs. Hey, while you're watching, comment, do you have any um, tips or tricks to keep your eyes from watering when you are doing this? Ugh, because mine are already going. I might be able to trim this end off and have another one. You can reserve, um, you're probably not going to be able to use these, so just have a container nearby. And I don't have one, but I'll get one when I pause to save this and reserve it for another recipe. So I'm going to do the same with my other onion. And I don't think this, I mean, you want to be fairly consistent so they cook evenly. I do know that much. But um, if they're not all exact, I'm sure life will go on. But... We will find out. Oh, this was a poor one. I may or may not get any rings out of there. Oh, did you hear that? The kids are playing somewhere. They're playing chase and fight, so. Ay. Oh, no! My innards came out! <laughs> I, duh. Okay, I'm going to still try this. Here, let's try this. Oh, I'm fairly smart. Okay, I'm not smart in the kitchen. There we go. I wrecked a bunch of these. So, then according to the directions, you are going to, let's see, discard any that did not turn into rings because you are a poor cutter. <laughs> oh, this one is a ring. Okay, this will go in the reserve section. And you need to get, keep two. You want two together. So, here we got two. It just has a little cut, but it's it's still there. I'm going to put these in a bowl. Or I guess you could pull these apart as you do them. Was this the inside? It's like a puzzle. No, this was from a different one. <laughs> Where's the inside of this one? Seriously, people? Do you, do you feel sorry for Eddie yet? Oh yeah, look, this one did go. See? It was a puzzle. I think this was there. Oh crap, well now I, it's not a ring anymore. Okay. <laughs> oh, I cannot see. I am going to be, because I hate to waste, and good lord knows I'm not going to cook anything else, so I'm going to try and even use this little one. Okay. Ugh! Onions. I love onions, but serious? Oh my goodness. I can see why you're not going to get a lot, because onions usually have, like, it, they don't have giant concentric rings the whole way. So, and then it's going to split into two again. Okay, from here, 
Got my onions ready, and I opened up my bacon. You can't see it. It's, it's right here. And you're going to take a slice of bacon, and I bought just the Target version. Um, I have no idea what will work better, you know, if you want it to be fattier or not. From here, you're just going to take it and wrap, wrap your double onions. And, um, Sia and the recipes I looked at said you could use, like, toothpicks or skewers if you want to keep them secure. And most of these, if they're large enough, you're going to need more than one piece of bacon. So, I'm going to just grab another piece and keep keep wrapping. Hold on. <laughs> Easier said than done. And I am apologizing. I'm sure I'm not right under camera. Yeah, yeah. But it seems to pretty much stick, you know, stay pretty, pretty close. And then you can take, where is it? I've got a scissor. If you're, you know, you could certainly um, wear gloves <laughs> if you want to. But there it is. It looks like a beautiful little wreath. So we're going to set that on. And I'm doing this, I took a, a pan and I lined it with foil. And then I put a, I had a little rack. I'm guessing you don't want to use a thick cut bacon because that would be, I don't know, I guess it's not the end of the world, but it might be a little harder to do the wraparound part here. <laughs> Again, it's a trial and error, so really I would think most people would do a test run to make sure um, <laughs> this works before they would film a video to put on YouTube about it. But if you watch my channel enough, you'll know that's not my style. I'm kind of a roll with it kind of girl and give it my best shot. And I, I'm pretty real. I keep things pretty real around here. So I'm not a professional at anything. And this obviously is going to show it. This is not an easy thing. Well, it's not many ingredients. You have onions, raw onions, which are slippery. You have bacon, which is slippery. Okay, yeah, we're not. We're just using a full piece. I think I can use two full pieces on this one. So this is a little tricky to maneuver. And you certainly don't want your nose to run or need to blow your nose. Sorry, that's probably gross. I shouldn't talk about that while I'm preparing food. But it's like, you're going to get messy. I, that's, I'm not sure. Like I said, even if I wore gloves... This wouldn't be that much easier. Hey, we got them all on. Okay, I got my first tray ready. And we'll see. Let's go put her in the toaster oven. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do for the other options. Okay, this is the variation number two I'm going to do. I took my onions. And you could use, um, I've seen sriracha. This is the... Um, hot sauce we use at our house, Tapatio. You could use Frank's. You could use whatever your favorite, Tabasco. And I don't know if this is how much I'm supposed to put on it, but I pretty much sprinkled, sprinkled, shook it over, and then I used my hands and kind of massaged it in. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute, and then I'm going to do the same thing and wrap those in bacon and set them aside. So according to Sia's recipes, um, I have them cooking at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, and then I'm going to take it out and gently flip them over and cook them for another 20. So I will video that and show you what it looks like, but let's get these ready for um, the oven for when the other ones are done. Okay, so my ta tapatio wrapped onions don't look a lot different. You can see a little bit of the tapatio sauce. And I'm trying, I had a couple of the smaller pieces with like little pieces of bacon left that it was too small to wrap around. So I just did a little, um, made it like wrapped present. We'll see how those cook in comparison, but if it works, then you'll know. And now let's get the third method ready. The third variation I'm going to try, I am once again use my onions, which are already um, prepped in double Double, double rings, and I did use up 
that whole pound of bacon. So if you have a large onion, you will probably only, you'll use like a whole pound of bacon to, um, to one onion. So I have those. So I do have my backup bacon, which my husband will probably be mad. It's a thicker cut and it's like a pecan smoked. So it's a little bit of her higher end, but maybe it'll taste good. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to roll the bacon around the onions again. And then I'm going to roll or basically pat them in brown sugar. The variation I saw of this recipe is you could add cayenne red pepper into here too if you want to add a little bit of heat. So I'm going to do a batch just with the um, brown sugar and I don't know I wonder if we did like the red the tapatio and then did the brown sugar on the outside how it tastes but anyway this is the third variation. Okay, here they are after 20 minutes at 400 degrees. You can see the bacon's definitely starting to crisp off. Quite a bit of fat has drained. And this is where probably a toothpick or skewer would help. There's a piece coming up. And over here where I had like the little extra half pieces, that one shrunk so much it's actually exposed onion. But live and learn. And now let's see if I can handle this. Hold on. You're going to need to flip them over. Let's try this one very carefully because you do not want the bacon to fall off. And then you can see the bacon on the bottom obviously looks still quite raw. So now we're going to flip all of these over. And actually, <laughs> they seem to be fine. It said like to be very, very careful. And I'm not having any problem with the bacon coming off. And it's actually not even that hot. So... This poor guy, eh. we'll see what happens. We'll just put your little piece of bacon back over you. So, everybody's flipped over. Let's go back in the oven for another 20 minutes. Okay, here's the first batch out of the oven. These were just the regular ones. I haven't tasted them yet. I just took them out and put them on his paper towels to drain. You can see, obviously, don't be cheap like I was <laughs> with my bacon. You obviously want it to overlap quite a bit so you don't get shrinkage and then onion sticking out. It's probably not the end of the world, but this poor one, when I use the red onion, it looks like it's sunburnt. It looks so sad, that naked piece. But, and there you can see. So, that's my first thing, is don't be cheap like me. And just, here's... A f almost good. There's one little spot where it peeled away, but I flip them. There! Oh, well, this one's not going to be saved. This one, I'll flip it over there. That piece of bacon. So from the top, they looked better. <laughs> but we'll let them cool a little bit, and then I'll try them. I have the second batch in the oven. Um, the bacon's, it's not overcooked, so... I think it's going to have a little chew. I guess it'll be a preference. You know, this piece was a scrap, so that's a crispy piece. But, um, they, I don't know, they look interesting. I'll give you a report. Lily, you want to say hello? Hey. Anyway, she was mad because the whole time I was prepping that, she couldn't be on the table or near me, so now she's going to soak it up. So, um... Oh yeah, I'm going to wash my face, as if you care, but I taste tested round one, which was the onion with just the bacon, no flavoring or anything. I'm not that thrilled. I did not make a dipping sauce. I have some, but I just wanted to try it pure. So I think, you know, in a dipping sauce, might be okay. Um, part of it, my brain needs to get around the fact, when I think onion rings, I think crunchy. And, Lily, you just bumped my hand. Uh, these are not crunchy. It's almost your, well, it's the inside onion. Like in an onion ring doesn't have the breading, but it was okay. I actually thought it kind of lacked some flavor. So it could be because I just used, you know, target bacon. Um, I'm not sure. And it was the white onion. So I got the other batches. Well, I got one batch. The bad thing, if you do this in a toaster oven like uh, this girl, you can only cook like six at a time. <laughs> That's all the room there is. And if it takes 40 minutes for each batch, and I think I have four batches, I might be up for a while. So we'll see how this one turns out. I actually did it a little different. Um, a variation four, <laughs> which I did not tell you about. I took the the brown sugar. Once I was done with that, it wasn't sticking that great to the bacon. So... Um, no idea how this taste flavor combo is going to work, but I had a canister of Italian style breadcrumbs, which means it has fl um, seasoning in there, Italian seasoning. So I mixed that in with the brown sugar 
and um, almost a 50-50 ratio. And then when I pressed the bacon onion rings into it, it actually stuck better. Just the brown sugar by itself wasn't, it stuck enough, so we'll see how it caramelized up. But um, the batch that's cooking right now is actually a mix of the brown sugar and the breadcrumbs. So I'll give you a review. Lily doesn't get to taste them. <laughs> I'll be back. Hey guys, wanted to give you a final review of my appetizer. Um, <laughs> they look a little more burnt than they should be because I actually was up way too late and had to finish them and then now I had to reheat them to do this final shot. So these are the plain ones where I didn't do anything to them. And to be honest, they're my least favorite. They're kind of eh. Maybe they'd be fine with um, a dipping sauce, but I'm actually using <laughs> those and I put them, I'm making like a cheater pizza right now with a flatbread. These are pretty good. I had marinated the onions in the um, tapatio red pepper sauce. You could really use anything, sriracha, um, Tabasco, whichever you prefer. The, I don't think they're overly hot, but you definitely get the kick without having to um, do a sauce so you get some flavor. These turned out pretty good. These were the ones where I had the um, breadcrumbs mixed with the brown sugar and they got a much better breading and kind of held together better and are more substantial. So, um, and the flavor, the Italian breadcrumbs didn't um, really do anything to make an off flavor. You can see a little bit of green, green Italian seasonings in there. So that this would be a really good way to do it um, with breadcrumbs and add whatever seasoning. I think you could add cayenne pepper if you wanted to try a sweeter. Maybe do some cinnamon or nutmeg. I don't know. Be crazy. And then these, the most burnt looking ones, are those that were just um, pressed into the brown sugar. The brown sugar didn't stick very well. I don't know if there's a better way. Um, like I said, I just had them rolled up and I pressed them into a cup of brown sugar, so not a lot stuck on. But these probably taste the best to me because I like the sweet um, and it got a nice caramelized outside. So, um, verdict, yes, they're very good. Will I probably ever make them again? No. <laughs> they were way too putsy and too much work for me. Um, hint, if you're going to do this, use the big oven. Don't be like me and use a toaster oven because I could only cook six, six rings at a time, which is what took so long. And um, yeah, so, but if you did it in a full oven and maybe you had someone help, they were like slippery and kind of a pain to get the bacon wrapped around. And really, you could only get maybe like three or four good size before they got too small to put the bacon around. So, Personal preference, um, yes, they're very good. For me personally, I won't make them again because they were um, too much work. <laughs> as much as I love bacon, but they are too much work. So anyway, hope you like this. Hope you try it. If you do, let me know and I'll let you know how my pizza turns out with it. I shouldn't even try. Patrick, you're the king of the three ingredient recipes. What do I need to do to this broccoli to make it not taste like grass? I tried to roast it, which in... Um, the oven, and by oven I mean toaster oven, I rarely use my grown-up oven. 